Section 1.6, Exponents. This video will help you evaluate whole number exponential expressions, evaluate integer exponential expressions, and evaluate exponential expressions with negative exponents. Let's start with evaluating whole number exponential expressions. And let's start with a definition of what an exponent is. So the expression 5 to the third power is an exponential expression. The exponent 3, which is right up top here, there's our exponent 3, indicates how many factors of the base 5, so here is my base right there down at the bottom, is 5, how many factors of the base must be multiplied. So for example here, if I'm taking 5 to the third power, right down here, the 3 is telling me I need to multiply 3 factors of this base. Well, 5 is our base, so I'm just basically going to take 5 and multiply it together with 3 of those factors. And so we'd start first by multiplying 5 times 5, which will give me 25, and then I'll take the 25 times 5 again to give me a final evaluated answer here of 125. So now let's go ahead and take a look at some examples that will help you understand how to evaluate an exponential expression. Example one, we're asked to evaluate two to the third power. Well, evaluate means we want to get this down to a, a, a single answer here. So let's see. Two is the base, three is the exponent, so that's telling me I need three factors of two. One, two, three of those twos need to get multiplied together. And we want to be careful here not to add these. We want to make sure we're multiplying. So I'd say, okay, two times two is four, and then four times two is eight. All right. Sometimes it's really easy for students to get confused when they first start out. They want to add these um, these bases together. But remember, repeated multiplication. Uh, uh, sorry. But remember that multiplication is repeated addition. If I had this, you know, two times three, that could mean that I want to add two three times. But if I have two to the third power, that indicates repeated multiplication. So I have to multiply. So multiplication is repeated addition, and now with exponents, it's repeated multiplication. Let's take a look at example two now. Write three multiplied together, one, two, three, four times in exponential notation. So we're not asked to evaluate here. All we want to do is write this as an exponential expression. So let's see, our base is going to be three. How many of those threes are we multiplying? Well, we're multiplying four of them, so that's going to be my exponent. Example three, any number with an exponent of zero is one. So I've got this very large number here, 5,679 to the zero power. Well, any number to the zero power is just going to give us one. Let's take a look real quick at why that works out that way. And I'll use uh, two again here. So we started up there with two to the third power. That was eight. If I do two to the second power, that's four. If I do 2 to the first power, that's just 2. And notice the pattern here. Basically, moving down to get to our next value here, 2 to the third power, to go from 2 to the third power down to 2 to the second. And basically, I'm just dividing by 2 or multiplying by 1 less 2. And then the same thing here. Pattern is always this, that we're dividing by 2 to move down to the next 1. So you can see why then that 2 to the 0 power if we divide by 2 again, it's going to give us just 1. And that will work regardless of whatever base we have, this same pattern. So that's how we end up with anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. Okay, Example 4, any number with an exponent of 1 is the same number. And so 9 to the first power, that's just going to give us 9. Just as we saw up here in that example that I gave you, that 2 to the first power was just 2. So now it's time to pause your video player and answer these practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Practice question five. In the exponential expression, six to the third power, six is the base, and three is the exponent. So in question uh, six here, we're asked to evaluate six to the third power. Well, that means I need to have three factors of six getting multiplied together. So I'd say, okay, six times six is 36. And then we need to multiply that one more time. Well, I don't know what 36 times 6 is, so let's go off to the side here. 36 times 6. Uh, 6 times 6 is going to be 36. Carry the 3. 6 times 3 is 18, plus the 3 is 21. So we're going to get 200. Oops. So we're going to get 216 there. 
Practice question seven. Write all of these sevens getting multiplied as an exponential in exponential notation. All right, well, we know our base is going to be seven. How many sevens are getting multiplied? One, two, three, four. So that's going to be seven to the fourth power. All right, question eight. Looks like we got two parts here. 652 to the zero power. Well, any number to the zero power is just going to be one. And then five to the first power, any number to the first power is just that number. So that's going to give us five. Now let's take a look at a definition. So the base appears immediately before the exponent. If a base is a set of parentheses, then everything inside the parentheses is part of the base. Just like I have written here in, in this one, both the three and the negative are part of being what's squared here. So we're taking both the three and the negative to the second power. So if the exponent touches the parentheses, so our base is that whole thing, that negative three. So to evaluate this, we're going to multiply two factors of negative three. So we're going to get negative 3 times negative 3, which is going to give us a positive 9. Remember, when we multiply and they have the same signs, we end up with a positive answer. We need to be careful here, though. When evaluating exponents, it's very important to identify the base is positive or negative. So this one right here, negative 2 to the second power, this is similar to the one I did up there in the definition. Both the 2 and the negative are getting squared here. So we are taking negative 2 times negative 2 which gives us positive 4. Here we want to be careful. If we don't have any parentheses on there, now that squared is not going to the negative symbol. It's just going to the 2. So essentially we have this here. You know, the 2 is getting squared, and then we're kind of bringing this negative along for the ride. So we'd kind of go 2 times 2 is 4, and then with the negative out front, we'd end up with a negative 4 answer. So be very careful. Parentheses, we're going to end up with a positive 4 as an answer, Without parentheses, we'll end up with a negative 4 as an answer. Now let's take a look at some examples. That will help you understand this uh, base, whether the base is negative or whether the base is positive. So let's see. Uh, we're asked to evaluate here negative 5 to the second power. Since the negative and the 5 are in parentheses, both of these are part of being, both of these are being squared. So we're going to get uh, negative 5 times negative 5. Well, and negative 5 times negative 5 is going to give us a positive 25 for our answer. Here, it's just the 8 that's getting squared. So essentially, we have this negative coming along for the ride, and then we have 8 times 8. And so we're just going to get then negative 64 for that one. Pause your video player now and answer these two practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, question 11. The negative is not getting squared here, so we kind of essentially have this. The negative out front, and then 7 times 7, which is going to give us negative 49. Here, both the 10 and the negative are getting squared, because they're in parentheses. So really we have here negative 10 times negative 10, which is going to give us a positive 100. So now we're going to go ahead and evaluate exponential expressions with a negative exponent. So let's take a look at the definition of what a negative exponent looks like. So if a is a real number, and that just means any real number that we can come up with, other than 0, and n is an integer. And remember our integers kind of go by increments of 1, both in the positive direction and the negative direction. So n is going to be our power here, and that has to be some sort of an integer. Then the negative exponent gives us a reciprocal. So here's an example, and then we'll go kind of go for the generalized form here. So here's our example right here. If I take 3 to the negative second power, we end up with this negative, or sorry, we end up with this reciprocal, 1 over 3 squared. That's kind of how we, we deal with just the negative part of this exponent. That negative part tells us then to move this into the base, which will give us a reciprocal. So 1 over 3 squared, and that works for any numbers. No matter what number I have, a to any sort of integer, if it's a negative exponent, then it tells me I need to take the reciprocal here. And I kind of gave you an example up there before. We kept dividing by 2 to kind of work our way down to an exponent of 0. Let's take a look now at negative exponents and how those work. So let's see. I'll start with 3 squared here. Uh, 3 squared was 9. And then 3 to, the fir oh, 3 to the first power, that's 3. And 3 to the 0 power, that's 1. And notice every time we're moving down here, we keep dividing by 3 to get the next number. And so you can see... 3 to the negative first power, then, 
When I divide 1 by 3, I'm going to get the fraction 1 third, which you can see is the reciprocal of 3 to the, fir 3 to the negative first power. It gives us that reciprocal 1 third. Similar to always writing a fraction in simplest form, we almost always rewrite the expression to remove the negative exponents. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help you understand how to remove the negative exponents and uh, simplify or evaluate an expression. Okay, let's look at 13 here. So I have 2 to the negative third power, and what I want to do is I want to get rid of that negative exponent first. And so the way I do that is I take the reciprocal. So this is going to become this is going to become 1 over 2 now to the positive third power. Putting that thing down in the denominator, which is the reciprocal, essentially removes the negative on that exponent. Now, once I get it down there, now I can figure out what 2 to the third power is. Well, that's just 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 again is 8. So this is actually going to be 1 eighth. Question 14. Same thing here. I want to remove that negative on that 2 of the exponent. So I'm going to write that now in the denominator. So that's going to become 1 over 3 squared. 3 squared is 9, so that gives us a final simplified answer of 1 ninth. Question 15, I have two negative exponents here. So I'm going to get rid of this, this, this negative exponent first, so that would look like this. 1 over 2 squared plus, now when I get rid of this negative exponent, that's just going to be 1 over 3 to the first power. Now let's go ahead and figure out what these denominators are. So really this first one is going to be 1 fourth and the second one here is really just going to be one third. So what I want to do now is get a common denominator to add these fractions together. And that common denominator is going to be 12. Um, the missing multipliers for the first one starting at 4 getting to 12. That has a missing multiplier of 3. Second one starting at 3 going to 12 that has a missing multiplier of 4. So it looks like we're going to get uh, 3 twelfths for this first one and 4 twelfths for the second one. So my final answer here is going to be 7 twelfths when I simplify or evaluate this expression. Okay, let's take a look at 16 now. I want to remove this negative exponent, so all I'm going to do is take the reciprocal here, so 1 over, now this negative 3 was not part of the negative exponent, so I don't want to drop the negative on the 3. That 3 is just a negative. Just to remove the negative exponent, all I want to do is take the reciprocal. And now I'm going to go ahead and square this. So this is 1 over, and notice both the 3 and the negative are getting squared there. So this is really going to be negative 3 times negative 3, which will give me a positive 9. Okay, now it's time to pause your video player and answer these practice questions. Uh, when you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, practice question 17. We'll take the reciprocal to get rid of the negative on that exponent. So that's going to become 1 over 4 squared. So you should have come up with 1 16th for that one. Again, to get rid of the negative exponent here on the 3, we'll take the reciprocal. So that's going to become 1 over 2 to the 3rd power. And 2 to the 3rd power is 8, so that's just going to give us 1 8th. Let's see, 19, 2 to the negative 1st power, well that's going to give us 1 half. 3 to the negative 1st power, that's really going to give us 1 3rd. Now let's look, common denominator of 6 for those two. Missing multiplier in the first one is 3 and 3. Second one is 2 and 2. So we end up with 3 6 plus 2 6 to give us a final answer of 5 6. Question 20. To get rid of this negative exponent, we're going to take the reciprocal. So that would be 1 over negative 2 to the third power. Make sure we don't drop that negative. That's not a part of the exponent. It's just a negative 2. And so then I would say, okay, 1 in the numerator, negative 2 to the third power. That means I'm going to take negative 2 three times. So let's see, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And then positive 4 times negative 2 is going to give us negative 8. So negative 1 eighth, and you could have written that answer this way, 1 over negative 8. Or you could have also written that negative 1 over 8. That means the same thing. Or you also could have put the negative out front and wrote 1 8 that way. All those answers are the same thing. So any three of those answers would have been good there. Let's take a look at another definition now. So if we have a fraction, then we also will get a, a reciprocal with a, um, 
with a negative exponent. So notice here I'm starting with this fraction, 3 to the negative second power over 1. To get rid of the negative exponent, now I'm going to drop that down to the numerator or flip this whole fraction. Same thing happens if the 3 to the negative second power was in the denominator, then I would take the whole fraction and take the reciprocal of that fraction. So let's kind of look at the generalized form. This says, okay, if a is a real number other than 0 and n is an integer again, then a negative exponent gives us a reciprocal and a fraction as well. And so here we are, a, any number, n is any integer. Anytime I have a negative exponent and my factor is in the numerator, I'm going to take that and just move it in the denominator to get rid of the negative exponent. And vice versa, if I have any factor that starts in the denominator with a negative exponent, I can move it to the numerator to get rid of that negative exponent. Now let's take a look at some examples that will help under now let's take a look at some examples that will help you understand how to um, remove negative exponents in a fraction. Okay, let's take a look. So we're asked to evaluate, which means so we're asked to evaluate, which means get this down to a single answer. So let's see, this three to the negative second power is currently in the denominator. To get rid of the negative exponent, I'm going to move that to the numerator. So it'll look like this then. Three, no. So now it'll become 3 to the second power times 1. Now down here in the denominator, when I move this thing out of there, we're always going to have a 1 left over, so I'm going to leave 1 down there in the denominator. Now let's look to simplify. In the top, I'd say, okay, 3 squared is 9. 9 times 1 is just 9. So I end up with this 9 over 1, which is equal just to the whole number 9. Example 22. Okay, 4 to the negative first power, that's in the numerator. To get rid of that negative exponent, I'm going to take that thing and now move it down to the denominator. So it's going to look like this. When I moved it, there'll be a 1 left up top, and then down below I'll have 4 to the first power times 2. So essentially here I'm just going to get the answer of 1 eighth. Okay, example 23. Here's my negative exponent. Let's take this factor and move it up to the numerator to get rid of it. So it would look like this. 5 times now 2 to the positive third power. When I move this out of there, there'll be a 1 left down below. So let's see. Uh, the denominator is easy. That's 1. The top, let's start by uh, using the exponent here. 2 to the third power is 8. So I have 5 times 8, which will give me 40 over 1, which is just 40 for that answer. Okay, 24. I have just one negative exponent and that's out here, but notice that negative exponent now is going to this whole fraction. So to remove that negative exponent, I need to take the reciprocal of this whole fraction. So to take the reciprocal, all I do is flip this. So it's going to become 5 over negative 3 to the positive second power. So removing the negative exponent, we just flip the fraction. Now I'm ready to evaluate. So I'm just going to square this, so that means I'm going to take 5 to the negative third times 5 to the negative third. Uh, let's see, I'll come right up here to give this answer. I'm running out of room there a little bit. So then across the tops I'll have 5 times 5, which is 25. Going across the bottoms I'll have negative 3 times negative 3, which gives me positive 9. And so you can leave your answer in improper form. Or if your instructor wanted you to write that as a mixed number, we could also have an answer of, let's see, 9 goes into 25 two whole times with 7 remainder. So either 25 ninths or 2 and 7 ninths for an answer there. Now let's go ahead and pause your video player and answer these practice questions. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, question 25. Well, to get rid of this negative exponent, we're going to take this guy and bring it down to the denominator. So this will be 1 over 2 to the third power. I think we've done 2 to the third power plenty of times there. That's just going to give us 8. So that'll be 1 eighth. 26. Here's my factor to a negative exponent. So that one there is coming down to the bottom. So I'll have 1 in the top, and then I'll have 2 to the second power times 3 to the second power. So let's see, 2 to the second power is 4, 3 to the second power is 9, so it looks like we get 1 36th for that answer. 27, we got 3 to the negative third power, so we're bringing that one up. 
So it will look like this. 3 to the third power times 1 over 1. 3 to the third power, I'm thinking 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 again is 27, and then 27 times 1 is just 27. So we're left with 27 over 1, which is just final simplified answer of 27. Okay, 28 is a little tricky, and I think the best way to do it is to start by simplifying what's inside, then we'll go to the deal with this negative exponent on the outside. And if we look inside, we've got this negative exponent there, which is bringing that down to the denominator. So let's see. It'll have a 1 in the top, and then we'd have 2 to the third power times 3. All of that now still to the negative second exponent. We haven't done anything with this negative exponent yet. Let's keep simplifying in here. Uh, 1 in the numerator. 2 to the third power is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Okay. Now let's get rid of this negative exponent out here. And to do that, we're going to take the reciprocal of this fraction. So it's going to look like this now. 24 over 1. And now it's to the positive second power. So now all we got to do is square this, and that means we're going to take 24 times 24 and then 1 times 1. So again, I'm running out of room here. We'll come up here to finish. So let's see, I need to take 24 times 24, so I'll come off on some scratch paper. Let's see, 4 times 4 is 16. Carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1, plus that 1 that we carried was 9. Now I'm going to multiply by 2. I want to start this answer directly below that 2, so I say 2 times 4 is 8 and then 2 times 2 is 4. Add those together. 6, 17, carry the 1, 576. So it looks like we're going to get 576 over 1, which is just equal to 576 for question 28.